Okay. All right, welcome viewers. Uh, my name is Steve Oguti from Kenya, um, and I'm here to attend the Evidence to Action 2019 um, conference. Um, and um, I know you're not used to this face, um, but I'm going to be your reporter for today. Uh, so with me here is, um, you know, Professor um, Michael Ketcher is a professor from professor of agriculture, ag agricultural and resource economics from the University of California, Davis. And so, Prof, um, what's your impression about um, this conference? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this has been a very, very interesting uh, conference. I've been very supportive of this idea for a long time. One of the challenges we face as professors and researchers is bringing our information into a space where it can be understood and be made useful. Uh, as professors, we sometimes like to hear ourselves talk, but we like even more when other people listen. And this uh, conference that the IST organization has put together is provides an absolutely vital forum where we can have that kind of conversation between researchers and, and, between, uh, and between government officials and ministries that can make good use of that information. Uh, great. I know you're an expert in matters agriculture, and, you know, agriculture uh, forms the backbone of most of African countries, you know, and uh, from your research and work in Africa, what are some of the gaps that need to be addressed to improve the livelihoods of small-scale farmers in Africa? Yeah. Uh, there, are, there, are a number, uh, there are a number of things that make the African continent, which is of course a very large and diverse place, uh, different. I think one of the ones that strikes me as most important is actually the risk that many farmers face. Uh, in places it can be absolutely overwhelming. Uh, the risk that an African farmer faces is three to four times higher than the risk that a farmer in my own country faces. And that level of risk can be absolutely crippling. Uh, to willingness to invest. Individuals, farmers, men, women, they need to think about next year. And if they have few resources and they say, I could take my few resources and stick them in the ground and hope all goes well. But if it doesn't go well, how am I going to feed the family? So farmers have learned over the years, the ones that are still with us, <laughs> have learned to be very careful and very cautious mm -hmm. and very conservative. So I think that's a, a really a fundamental issue that needs addressing uh, if we can close what many of us call the yield gap, the difference between what the typical smallholder fam farmer in Africa produces and what's actually technologically possible if you're able to mobilize the resources to make the necessary investments. Right, so today I listened to, I sat in one of your, when you're giving one of your presentation and you shared expert insights around insurance in the agri agricultural sector. Uh, why do you think this is important for farmers in sub-Saharan Africa and is it working in other countries? Yeah. Um, I would say insurance in agriculture in Africa is still a work in progress. Uh, people often say insurance is expensive but the lack of insurance is even more expensive. So I've done these kinds of calculations on different farming systems. And farmers may be having incomes that are 25, 50%, even 75% less on average than they might be by adopting very conservative strategies. So the challenge is, is there a way to de-risk the system? And agricultural insurance, specifically agricultural index insurance, promises uh, as a tool that will de-risk the system. However, it's a complex area. I think we're learning a lot fast. The technology that's available is evolving very, very quickly. And I think we're very close to a breakthrough when small-scale farmers or livestock herders can be offered insurance that's reasonably priced and actually offers them genuine protection and in a sense liberates them to take advantage of some of the opportunities that are there. Okay. Your final thoughts? Uh, again, I really want to thank the organizers of this event, the ICER here at the University of Ghana, uh, and especially David Amayao and the International Center for Evaluation and Development for bringing this grouping together. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Um, so um, we, 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 um, I'm trying to get a hold of um, uh, the, the chief minister, uh, uh, the chief minister from the Ministry of um, Monitoring and Evaluation, Mr. Kobner. 